I'm a little confused about your leap into journalism. I know you went to college, well, you, you went to Catholic school just like me as a kid. You went to college and you studied philosophy, and then you got a master's in religious studies. Mm -hmm. And then you were a high school teacher teaching journalism and overseeing the high school newspaper, which, like, the biggest decision is should you put the photo of the basketball team on the cover or the photo of the debate team? That's, you know, what's going to be on the front page. And then somehow you... Yeah, okay, answer to that question, basketball always wins. Uh, well, then, <laughs> my friends are <laughs> debates, so we would not, you know... Hey, I was a high school, state champion high school debater, baby. I mean, my, uh, my, I'm all in uh, all right. with high school debate, but I'm just telling you, from the point of view of sexiness as a news story, the basketball team generally is going to win. What if debate wins state and high school just had a game? We were on an inside pitch. All right. So how did you make that leap into, into I should say, actual journalism? But you know what I mean, from high school over... Oh, no. I mean, listen, I'm a complete journalistic phony, okay? I mean, the way this worked was uh, I was uh, out in Southern California trying to uh, get a doctorate uh, in scripture studies, actually. Uh, my wife and I had just gotten married, and like every couple just starting out, we were trying to figure out how we're going to pay the bills. Uh, and I said, well, listen, I will try to take some kind of part-time job that will buy us some time, right? Now, you're 22 years old. You've got a master's degree in religion, okay? What kind of part-time job are you going to get that is not like flipping hamburgers, <laughs> right? Uh, and so it occurred to me, well, I could teach in a Catholic school. Because like an idiot, I thought, well, you know, they get done at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's a part-time right. job, right? That's right. Uh, and, uh, and so I interviewed at a couple of places. I actually hired to teach religion. It was a complete accident that this place also happened to have a journalism class. Mm -hmm. uh, and nobody in the grand tradition of Catholic secondary education, no one even remotely qualified to teach it. <laughs> Remember, the principal asked me during the interview, hey, uh, we have this journalism class. Could, uh, could we give you that? Uh, do you have any background in journalism? To which my answer was, well... I read the paper, uh, and I guess hired. that was good enough, you know? Uh, and then very quickly, to be honest, what happened was I started envying my kids. I mean, uh, you know, they were out hustling for news and doing stories, and that all looked very cool to me. Mm -hmm. So I started freelancing uh, at a couple different places. I realized you could get paid to write about religion without learning Hebrew and Sanskrit and without using footnotes. Uh, that sounded like a pretty sweet deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I decided to sort of try my luck, and the rest is history. Well, what was that first job? Or what was that first tape that you got? <laughs> Believe it or not, my first, first paid, my first paid writing gig had nothing to do with the Catholic Church. I was writing a classic car column for the Antelope Valley Press. <laughs> uh, I can't even change my own oil, right? So yeah. I was writing these pieces about the 57 Chevy as a metaphor for social change in post-war Los Angeles, mm -hmm. you know, which I'm sure all the car guys wondered, what the hell is this, yeah. you know? Uh, but uh, but uh, I floated a couple of ideas uh, to the National Catholic Reporter which was a nationally distributed paper that covers the Catholic Church. Uh, they liked the ideas. Uh, before very long, they had offered me a job, and there we are. And suddenly you